I have struggled for years trying to understand the outline of the book of Revelation. Now you think that that would be easy because it's filled with so many numbers that I'll outline rather easily. And there are more suggested outlines of the book of Revelation than probably all the other books of the Bible combined. Most books in the Bible are just, there's no option. There's about only one way you can outline it. But the book of Revelation seems to have an unlimited ways of outlining. And outlining, of course, is for the purpose of understanding the flow of ideas. And so I struggled with that. And uh, one day, not too long ago, only a, uh, really a few weeks ago, I was pondering the relationship of Revelation chapter 4 to Revelation chapter 2 and 3. Now, if you're familiar with the book of Revelation, you realize 2 and 3 is about the churches, and chapter 4 just has an utterly and entirely new content. It's, a, it's like a, there's a break between the two. It, it's, it, it's, that doesn't exist in chapters 1 to 2 and 3. 2 and 3 is a unit, about a message to the churches. But 1 tells you we're going to write this letter, so there's a connection into it. Two and three from one. But when you get to four, you just simply have John all of a sudden in heaven. And then you have the heavenly throne room sink. And I was pondering that. <laughs> and said, what is there's got to be a relationship. I mean, this is you know, this is one document, one book. What is the relationship between uh, these uh, things? Can I get you to pass this around? This is some of my early notes. And as I pondered it around, for, for whatever reason, uh, I began to associate the book of Revelation with the book of Exodus. I'm not sure why I did that. I'd like to think it's because I'm really creative, but I think I read about it someplace in my, you know, my distant studies, and it hung up back there. And uh, I'm about to take credit for something I didn't actually think of. I just sort of rethought it up. But as I pondered it, I began to see a relationship between the book of Exodus and the book of Revelation. I want to run through it real fast with you. Um, on page one there, you see Revelation. Jesus appears to John in Revelation as God appeared to Moses as the I Am in Exodus. Now, if you remember the story of uh, uh, Moses in Exodus, how God appeared to him at the burning bush, identified himself as the great I Am, you will see how now God is appearing to um, John identifies himself as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and, and uh, really the same titles. Uh, <clears throat> that, that looks interesting. If you go over to chapter 2 and 3 on the next page, you just skip all the Bible verses there. We see in chapter 2 and 3 where God appears to his church in Revelation as he did to the tribes of Israel and Egypt. Remember how Moses was given the command to go to Egypt and tell them, you know, this and this and this. Uh, you know, prophetically uh, describe what's going to happen to the, to the 12 tribes. And so here we have uh, John saying, now send this letter to the seven churches and uh, communicate with them. I, I see a parallel there. And if any of you are out there thinking, boy, is he stretching today? Uh, I may be. Chapter 4. This is what got me thinking. We have a heavenly throne room scene in Revelation chapter 4. But we also have such a scene on Mount Sinai in, uh, uh, in uh, the book of Exodus. A, uh, a revelation of God uh, to Moses. And then we have a revelation of God to John. See, not to everybody, but just these... Heavenly throne room scenes. And the, the book uh, 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 Exodus and Sinai, that was a throne room scene where God appeared in his glorious heavenly uh, vision to, uh, to Moses. Then we go look on to uh, chapter 5. The covenant document. There's a covenant document in Revelation chapter 4. Excuse me, chapter 5. And that is the scroll for the seven seals. This is the, the, uh, the document, really, it, it actually could have been, it, 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 there's a lot of things that could have been, but this document, this covenant document, is going to serve as the basis for the judgment on uh, Israel at this time. And these breaking of these seals 
are uh, let loose judgment in uh, on uh, the uh, city of Jerusalem and, and the Israeli community. Well, in fact, there was also a covenant document in the book of Exodus, and that was the Ten Commandments. Both had their covenant document, and both were broken. <laughs> uh, remember, Ten Commandments, uh, Moses threw it at the feet of his the disobedient community, and he busted in pieces, and uh, he had to go back and do it again. <laughs> Get another copy. Uh, Revelation 16, 6 through 19. Jerusalem, excuse me, judgments in Egypt, on Egypt, in Exodus, and judgments on the new Egypt, that is Israel, in Revelation. Um, Revelation 6 through 19 is about judgments. I mean, every word almost from through those many chapters are about God pouring out judgments on the enemy of his enemy. And that enemy, uh, he identifies in Revelation as Egypt and Sodom. He, he, these are like ugly titles. He, he's given to Jerusalem. And in fact, in the book of Exodus, God pours out judgment, ten of them, on Egypt, judging the enemies of his people. In both cases, the enemies of God's people are being judged. Revelation 20 through 22. Uh, there is a heavenly picture of a, prom of a promised land flowing with milk and honey in Exodus. That's laid out to the community of faith. You're going to move forward and through this, uh, uh, these judgments and out through the Sinai into the land flowing with milk and honey. And it's pictured as a paradise. Now, interesting, when they got there, it wasn't quite that of a paradise, but there, there was actually the potential of this great paradise if they had embraced it by faith. Uh, but it was, it was a, you know, land flowing with milk and honey, and I thought, yeah, that's where I want to be, you know. Uh, all the good stuff is there. Revelation chapter 20 through 22, if you remember how that, the book ends in the New Jerusalem, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. It's an ideal picture. It may be a picture of the church, ideally, like Israel had a picture of their ideal existence if they would only embrace it. And this could be a picture of the church. If they would only embrace it, there will be a new, you know, heavenly, uh, uh, millennial-like uh, hope that's set before the church. Or it could be a picture of eternity. But either way, they both have their lands flowing with milk and honey. So as I pondered the chapters, I thought, this is interesting. I wanted to share that with you. You can also see, as I started in chapter 1, I actually then began to work through chapter 1. Uh, God identifies himself in uh, uh, Revelation and in uh, Exodus. Uh, the application of the blood is found in above. Uh, our role as kingdom and priests, which are spelled out in both books. Purpose and coming, that is uh, cloud judgment and coming. We have the writer in exile. John is in exile. You have Moses in exile in Midian, you say, having fled for his life. And then you have uh, the uh, light of the world, the lampstands that are mentioned. Now, I only skim through chapter 1. There may be more in chapter 1. And there may be more as I get through the other books of, excuse me, chapters of the book of Revelation. But it appears to me this might be uh, a, a useful outline. And, and, and this was, you may it'd be surprising how hard it was for me to come up with this over the years. I studied outline after outline after outline, and you know what? They all look good to me. Every one of them. I said, well, that, that guy's nailed it. He got an excellent. I said, no, no, he's better than the last guy. And, it, and I'm not sure there's, there's not a, a multifaceted way that as many outlines draw, uh, draw us into many insights into the book of Revelation. Perhaps this is just one of many. Now where this came from, I don't know, but in the back of my mind the other day, I just pondered this and it just sort of came and I wrote it down. And I'm going to work on it some more in the, the weeks ahead, see if I can flesh it out of it and see if it can hold up under scrutiny. Uh, any questions?